hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, today I'm going to talk about um, some of the key things that happened here in China of how, you know, we we kind of made the situation a lot better here. A lot of other countries have taken similar procedures, particularly in East Asia, South Korea and Japan, and Singapore places, and they're all seeing pretty positive results right now. The West seems to be a little bit slow on the uptake for some reason, and they are kind of dragging their feet about putting in any real positive steps. But things are changing. There are things happening now, which is really good. So I'm going to talk you through a little list. There's going to be six things. All right, so number one was home quarantining, um, just staying at home. Now, here in China, we had about five weeks straight where basically no one went outside. You went outside for a tiny bit maybe to buy some things. And we were allowed to go out uh, once every two days. One person from each apartment was allowed to go out once every two days. Um, so obviously that meant that the streets were absolutely deserted for, for over a month. Uh, it was really, really quiet. Okay. For me, this is the biggest thing. Um, if, if everyone stays away from each other for, for a month, basically this virus, the problem, the problem becomes way more manageable really, really quickly. But it, it still takes time. It takes, like I said, it took us a, over a month of this before we started to see really positive results. Um, now, this has got to be done in the right way. Now, the idea of, of, obviously, I'm aware that in Italy, obviously, they've got this serious problem at the moment, which is horrible, and um, every, everyone's thinking about uh, Italy now. It looks bad, unfortunately, but it, it will get better if they keep doing it right. When they first put in the the the, uh, the lockdown measures and things like that, people were still going out to restaurants and bars. Um, that's very different to how it was here. Uh, that's all I'll say. Here, there was nothing open. Nothing was open. No one was going out for weeks. That's why it got better here. Also, it's why South Korea has also seen, you know, they had one of the first big outbreaks uh, after China. And now they're also seeing really, really, really positive results. Okay. Sounds simple. Actually, people have just got to do it and stop being selfish. Basically, just stay inside for a while. Problem solved. Kind of. All right, the number two thing I want to talk about is um, checks, different checks that we had. We had, and we still have today, actually. I went out today and I got my temperature checked. Whenever you leave or come and go from a community, you get your temperature checked. Not always, sometimes they forget, but mo mostly they do this. And uh, I went out today for, I met a friend for lunch. Um, we're kind of going out a bit more now for food and things. It's a bit unnerving, but I, I feel okay with it. Um, and again, same thing, checking in, show your passport, get your temperature checked, all this kind of stuff. Um, of course it's useful. I mean, I don't think it's, it's not massively useful, but it does help. It allows you to monitor yourself a little bit more. And um, I'm not sure if other countries are doing this at all. Well, actually, I know South Korea is, but there you go. The other thing we're getting checked on is we have been given a QR code each. Uh, this is essentially a little thing that we have to scan when we take a taxi or, or anything like that, go into a shopping mall. Um, and that QR code has a little green thing in the middle. You hope it's green, basically. If it turns to yellow or red, it means you've got a problem. It means you've probably been in contact or, or, or in somewhere close to someone who was... Uh, confirmed with a virus or something like that. Um, basically, what that means is if you get in a taxi, um, you can see from the footage, obviously, the taxis are... <laughs> they're all, like, sheeted up and they've been quite serious about it as well. If you get in a taxi, you scan uh, your QR code, and then, obviously, later, if, for example, someone in that taxi before you gets confirmed with the coronavirus, they contact every single person who was in the same taxi afterwards. It's a way of... It's a, it helps track people, basically. Um, might not happen in a lot of countries just because of, um, well, different laws, basically. So the third thing I want to talk about is contact tracing and about the actual information that we were given here um, about each, each case. Um, a lot of countries have done really well with contact tracing. And obviously that is where you look for every person who's come into contact with any confirmed, anyone with, who's confirmed with, with the coronavirus. Um, and they've been obviously pretty serious about that here from the beginning, as they have in, uh, in uh, other places in East Asia as well. Obviously, that's a huge impact. Of course, it does. What The other thing that I think happened here, but really not anywhere else, is uh, we were given all this information about every single new case in the city or in the province or whatever. Um, information about where that person had been. So if they'd been on a bus or a train, 
what time it was, what the number of the train was, for example, the carriage they were in, all this stuff. So you could kind of keep checking things if you'd been out. Um, I'd been uh, on a train from Chengdu to Xi'an on the 23rd or 22nd of January, something like that. And um, basically every day I was, you know, I was checking that to see if there was any cases on that train, basically. And it's quite a useful thing, obviously. It allows you to look and see if there was someone... This was before the QR code thing came in. So it was before you could see if you were in any kind of close proximity to someone who was confirmed with having the coronavirus. Um, again, useful things. Not going to happen everywhere in the world, that, of course, but it, it did happen here. Right, number four is the mask issue. Now, this has been... I have my opinion on this, and a lot of people have different opinions to me. Uh, but basically in China, every single person's worn a mask, myself included. We had to wear a mask, actually, at one point. Um, and everyone wears masks. And the same in South Korea, and the same in Japan. And, uh, yeah. Right, it's a little bit more of a cultural thing to actually wear a mask here. Like, it's not seen as some kind of crazy weird thing. People do wear masks in East Asia quite a lot. So we all had masks originally, so it wasn't a big problem. Now in the West, obviously, people are being told that it's not important to wear a mask or you shouldn't wear a mask if you don't have symptoms. I think a lot of that is actually because of supply and or lack of supply, which does make sense. If there's no masks, obviously, well, what can you do? I mean, hopefully that'll change. Um, there are some weird things that I think, like, okay, so in the UK, for example, people are being told if you... You go out and you have symptoms, you should wear a mask. Um, but also told if you have symptoms, you should self-isolate for 14 days. If you're self-isolating for 14 days because you have symptoms at home, by yourself, you don't need to wear a mask. So I don't really understand that myself. Um, if someone else has any, could enlighten me, I'm, I'm all ears. Um, I think it's important. Um, personally, I think it's a, a, really, a really big thing. Hopefully supply chains will you know, sort themselves out. Right, the big thing in the news now, um, it was uh, on the BBC yesterday, was about potential second wave or the second wave now coming to uh, Asia in you know the countries I've been mentioning quite a lot in this video. South Korea, Japan, Singapore and China, obviously. Um, the second wave, it's a big problem. Of course, it's a big issue. So what's happening about it? Well, here in China, w anyone who comes into the country is quarantined in a hotel for 14 days. Now I've got a very good friend of mine, I mentioned him in my last video, who is currently on day 13 of his 14 day hotel quarantine. He got tested as well, it was like a swab, like a throat swab or something, and he's fine. Um, so he's getting out tomorrow, which is great news. That's a situation. If you come back, you get quarantined, which is a way to hopefully stop a second wave. Sounds promising. Putting that into context, uh, I've got two very good friends of mine also who just flew back to the UK from uh, from Malaysia and they said they got absolutely no checks at all, nothing. Not even a temperature check when they flew into the UK, which shows that still procedure in the UK is way behind where it should be. Um, big problem. Luckily, they're very responsible people and uh, they'll do the right thing and, 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 and look after themselves. Um, it's a big thing. I think that this is, is just something that's got to change. New Zealand also, and a few other, quite a lot of other countries are doing this now where you're getting quarantined going into a country. It's a really, really positive step. Um, it's going to stop travel, obviously, but you know what? It works. I think it works. All right, the last thing I'm going to talk about, number six, actually there's loads of other things, but I'm just picking out a few of the key ones, I think, is about schools. Schools closed here very early and they're still closed now. In South Korea, they closed schools really early as well, and they've also just extended again. In the UK, they've just started to close schools, which is great. It's a really good thing. Probably should have been done about a month ago, um, but nevertheless, it's happening. It, the idea that kids don't suffer that much from this illness, actually, by all, by all accounts, it is true. Kids seem to be, you know, not that affected by it, which is great news, of course. But kids spread disease like no one else, right? And, it's, and this is the issue, and this is why it is important to, to close schools. Um, obviously, the information that's come from the UK, particularly, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm talking about the UK government a lot. Obviously, that's the news I'm reading mainly outside of here. Um, is that initially they said that closing schools might not have any effect. Um, dumbest advisors in the world. Uh, but obviously they've changed that now, which is which is good. Um, I, hope that I hope that advisor, you know, got removed or replaced somewhere. 
Um, it is a positive thing that they're closing schools and they're closing schools all over the world now. Um, things are going to go online, which is what we've been doing here for ages. Um, yeah, I think that's a positive step. And it's something that has been done really, really proactively here in Asia. And honestly, very slowly elsewhere. But at least it's starting to happen now. All right, that's the end of the video. Basically, there's a load of other stuff I'm going to talk about, but I'll do that on another video, I think. Um, tomorrow, my plan is I'm going to go and get my friend out of quarantine. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we're going to go out and um, have a few beers. That's the plan. Um, yeah, I'll try, and, I'll try and take a bit more video and see how things are going. Everyone stay safe um, and look after yourself and um, yeah, be responsible. It's time to just stay indoors for a while. Change your habits. Things will get better. Take care. Bye-bye.